Hi, this is Kevin. Welcome to my lecture on um, introducing the course and reviewing the syllabus. Uh, these were typically things that I would do on a first uh, day of class, uh, but they do take quite a bit of time. And um, especially in the summer semester, uh, we don't really have that time in class. So I'm doing a recording and um, I think it's going to work out pretty well for all of us. So right now we're looking at the Moodle site for our course. So our course is uh, IS455, Database Design and Prototyping. Uh, I'm teaching it in the summer of 2021. And I've organized the site here pretty much the way I organize all my courses on Moodle. The first piece of content is a link to the syllabus, okay? And you have to click through twice, but if you do that, you should get to the syllabus, and there's the syllabus right there, okay? And we'll be talking about that in a minute, okay? And if I should change the syllabus, make some correction in it, uh, that link will still work. I'll replace the file underneath it and I'll make an announcement in the announcements forum and here's our announcements forum and as you can see I made three announcements uh, so far uh, one where I welcomed you to the course uh, the next one where I published the, the syllabus and the last one where I published the weekly schedule which we're going to be uh, reviewing in uh, a couple of minutes, okay? So whenever I make a change or there's some uh, kind of interesting announcement about the course, um, I'm going to make an announcement in the forum here. And uh, you should see that announcement in your email. And then you should also be able to read it uh, on the Moodle site like we just uh, saw. There is a form for open uh, discussion, okay? And um, I do monitor open uh, discussion, um, uh, but it's really a discussion for students to have with students, okay? Um, if I see it taking a wrong turn, okay, or I see some opportunity, I'll jump in, oh, okay? The place to get help for things when you're stuck from me or from Xiaolang, our TA, uh, is the service uh, desk for our course, which I'll be talking about in a minute. Okay. Now, sometimes uh, people want to go a little bit faster than that, you know. Uh, typically, you know, we answer back. Uh, uh, post to the service at desk within uh, 24 hours. Well, perhaps you want to see if one of your uh, class mates might be able to answer your question uh, in an hour. Okay, so this is a valuable place. Um, I just, you know, I just want you to know it's not the official place to get help from me. Okay, Zoom interface. So this is a place that you go to to find all our Zoom sessions. As you can see here, our first uh, uh, class meeting is on Tuesday, May 18th at 6 p.m. Okay, so uh, I would really ask you to use these links in the Moodle in order to sign into our uh, class uh, uh, sessions and to our um, and to our online labs. Okay, and the reason is if you log in this way, okay, all the metadata about you including your photo, for instance, if you put your photo into Zoom, uh, 
is going to show up. So you're going to show up with the right name. You're going to show up with, you know, the right avatar. You're going to show up with the right everything. Okay. If in fact you try to take uh, the meeting ID, which is not going to work without a password anyway, um, and just log in some other way, well, you're going to show up, but you're not going to be properly identified to the rest of us. Okay, so make a habit of coming here to log in. Okay, so we got a bunch of tabs here. Um, the first uh, tab is a kind of general course information, uh, the name of the course, details about the section, the semester, when when it meets uh, Tuesday evenings. Uh, I'm the instructor okay um it kind of talks about how to get a hold of me okay the way to get a hold of me is uh to come to class or to come to the online lab which is on sunday morning or if you need help with something outside of that well open a ticket on the service desk and uh you can find out about that under the tab for contact us okay right up here the TA for the course is Xiaolang Jiang. Uh, Xiaolang has, I think this is uh, the third semester he's going to be a TA for this course for me. Uh, he's just wrapped up his work on the spring course. I think we work well uh, together and I'm looking forward to working with him again in the summer. Okay, the next tab, your preferred name. Okay, for a lot of reasons, the official name that shows up for us is not always a name that we'd like to be known by in the course. Okay, so, um, uh, and that's unfortunate. Okay, because um, I, I know that I, as the instructor, and I know a lot of your class mates would like to use your preferred name when we speak to and about you okay so there are instructions on here about how to change your name in the university systems such that when you show up to class or you show up to online lab uh your name appears as you wish Okay, so please do that and please do that soon. Okay, contact us. Okay, uh, I don't use email for corresponding with students because I have a history of doing that very badly. Okay, and for approximately the past five years, I've used a, a ticket uh, system uh, to... Uh, help students with whatever they want help with okay and those could be technical things or they might be administrative things they could be all kinds of things okay but don't send individual emails to me or to Chow Lang use the service at desk it creates a lot of extra value and I have a lot of information here about it, including a tutorial video uh, about how to use the service desk for this uh, course. So please uh, put some time into this. There's a pretty big chunk, a chunk of uh, credit towards your participation grade for the course that you'll earn uh, when you make your first post to the service desk uh, which is a greetings uh, post um, within the first two weeks of the course so i invite you to do that sooner rather than later the weekly schedule um, is a place where we have a link to the weekly schedule app okay i'm going to come back to this in just a minute okay there is a tab for submit assignments. Okay. Um, and I can see that that's currently hidden. 
well, that's not good. Let me go fix that as we talk. So if I go down to Submit Assignments, I think I can turn that back on. Show Topic. Okay. Very good. Uh, and got to turn off the editing. And now we're back to Submit Assignments. So there is a Moodle submission activity for each assignment that we have. Uh, we have all of the coding assignments and then the last thing that we have is the final uh, project. Um, uh, to be honest, I uh, had these uh, copied from the spring uh, course to the summer course and I've changed all the dates and times, okay? But the really official dates and times are in the weekly schedule. So if you find a discrepancy between the date and time stated on the Moodle submission activity and the weekly schedule, well, the weekly schedule is the more authoritative. And please open a ticket to warn me that I've made a mistake. I had that happen in the spring course. Um, I try not to make these kind of mistakes, but uh, well, I, 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 I'm human. Uh, uh, just like all of you, I would hope, and mistakes do happen. Okay, so that's what those are for. I have a tab for assignment solutions. Uh, I think that tab's currently hidden, but uh, it has all the solutions on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unhide the section and then I'll unhide each of the solutions as uh, we get to time to show them. Um, the solutions are uh, what we discuss in the class after the assignment was due. So we really put a lot of work into the coding assignments, doing them well, understanding them, talking about the variability of different solutions, um, you know, what what could be a good uh, practice, what seems appealing but might be a bad uh, practice. We want to get good at coding, um, but uh, good coders are typically also good at talking about a coding because it helps them get better. And so we're going to do both. So you're going to see the solutions. I typically uh, turn these on um, the day of um, our next uh, class. OK, and so you're able to download them uh, at the beginning of the class. Uh, and then that's part of the discussion that we have during the class. OK, so those are all the tabs. Uh, let's look at weekly schedule. Okay, so the weekly schedule is a website, okay? Uh, it's a static, well, it's kind of a static website. It's a static website that I regenerate uh, every time I change the schedule, okay? And I might change it because, um, well, there's an extra piece of content that I'd like to put up. Or I might change it because, I found a mistake in the content, or you found a mistake in the content, and you opened a ticket, and I fixed it, and whatever, okay? So let's click through on here to the weekly schedule, okay? And you'll see that here. So when you go to the weekly schedule for our course, you can see it's our course. You can see all the weeks. The numbers of the weeks are links to weekly schedule pages. Okay, it's not completely obvious, but that's what they are. So we're about to come up on week one. Yeah, let me make this a little bit bigger. So what you have here are uh, the things that are gonna happen during the week, okay? And uh, so we've got, you know, the total information, etc. Um, each uh, box that shows on a weekly schedule page uh, is either a scheduled event or it's a note, okay? So the first event 
is our Tuesday class. The, the second event is our Sunday morning online lab, okay? And the third event uh, is a deadline very late Sunday night when the assignments are due, okay? Uh, so let's look through those. I think I'm going to walk you through the schedule and then I'm going to walk you through the syllabus, okay? So when I first session, the topics are, we're going to review the syllabus and review the schedule. Uh, the fact is, uh, we're doing that now, so you're playing that ahead of time. We're going to introduce ourselves, okay? Uh, we're going to cover uh, two of the chapters from the Andy Oppel uh, textbook, Introduction to Data Modeling and Relational Model uh, Components. And what I'm going to say here is we're going to cover them lightly. We'll be, we're, we're going to be back to the chapters um, uh, at least to uh, chapter two, I think, uh, in the end of the course, okay? So this is a course where we talk a little bit about uh, relational databases, their general properties, and how to design them, and how to model relational data. We talk a little bit about that in the beginning of the course, okay? And then we learn a whole lot about how to use relational uh, databases that other people have created. That's the middle of the course, and it's a very big uh, part of the course. And then in the last three weeks of the course, we come back and we take a serious look at, I'm sorry, in the middle portion of the course, we do a little database uh, design. We have a chapter on it, and it's a good kind of introduction. But then the third part of the course, the last three weeks, uh, we really do a sort of graduate school level uh, treatment of data modeling and relational database uh, design. At that point, we come back to the Apple book and we cover more. Okay? Uh, recordings that I want you to play are typically under the section required recordings. Readings that I want you to do are under the uh, the section required readings. Okay. Other resources are uh, uh, things to read or to to refer to that are um, oh kind of related to um, what we're talking about here. Uh, in this case. We've got the slides for uh, the recordings that I, I did. And then we have a discussion prep assignment where I give you enough information to get ready for the part where we're going to introduce ourselves, which is going to be a big thing of our first uh, class. Online lab, what's that about? Online lab is optional, OK? Uh, we're going to meet every Sunday morning from 9 to 10. And um, this is a chance to, let's see what I say. Please drop by to ask a question to discuss solutions to previous assignments, to get help with the current assignment, or discuss the final project, or just to say hello. Some people actually come to these, even if they don't have a problem in hand. Um, because they want to know what other people are doing. You know, what kinds of problems do other people see? Maybe there is a problem and you missed it, right? So um, not everybody comes every week, okay? There's the occasional person who does come every week. But generally speaking, there are some people who come most of the time. And then um, there's an assortment of, of people who come when they need to. I'd love to see you. I think we create a lot of value with them. They're optional. Uh, please come and uh, check it out. Now, the Zoom link for regular classes and for these lab sessions are on our Moodle page under the Zoom 
uh, link. Okay, so the links that show up there, there's a class link, there's a lab link, there's a class link, there's a lab link. So that's how you connect uh, to the lab. The weekly assignment deadline is a time that I want you to finish your work by. Uh, it's uh, the end of the day on Sunday, okay? One of the reasons I have the lab on Sunday morning is most of us are very busy, okay? And I know there are plenty of you who will be working on this before Sunday, okay? But Sunday's kind of the drop dead day. So Sunday morning is a good time to go get help uh, if you're going to need some help. So here's what I'm gonna say, okay? If you take a crack at your homework assignment by Saturday, then you'll know what your trouble is. You can show up on Sunday morning. You've got all day Sunday to get it right and get it in by Sunday night, okay? Um, if you're gonna miss the deadline and you need an extension, uh, then I would like you to open a ticket on the service desk and request an extension, okay? And I'm pretty fair about granting them, okay? Um, it, the most important thing for me is that you get this work done before the start of the class in which we're going to discuss it, okay? Unfortunately, I have learned that if I set that as the deadline, too many people miss it. Okay, so um, I am open to fair and appropriate extensions. If you need one, use the service desk, all right? Okay, so that's week one. I'm not gonna talk about everything in such uh, detail, but let's kind of go through the course and see what we're gonna talk about. Okay, um, there, there are, you know, next and previous and links uh, to the index uh, page here. So um, we're in a summer semester. The summer semester is, uh, well, for our course, the longest course you can have in the summer is uh, 12 weeks. Um, I have found that I can teach the same material that I would teach in a normal semester. They're 16 weeks long with one holiday week uh, or vacation week. So they're 15 weeks long, right? Um, so I have found that we can make up those three weeks by uh, doubling up on some stuff in some of the weeks and not having quite as much leisurely time at the end to work on your final project. So you've got to get started on your final project a little bit earlier in the semester uh, when we're in the summer. You know, but 12 weeks is a long time. Um, and uh, I've been teaching this in the summer for like a long time, like, I don't know, five years, uh, seven years, uh, something like that, quite a while. And um, if, people, if people in the summer learn as much as... Uh, people do in the fall and the spring, uh, we just have to work a little bit harder, okay? Um, we're covering uh, chapters one, two, and three in week two. I think we may even do that in the in the normal long semester, okay? Uh, chapters one and two are pretty introductory. Uh, chapter one is an introduction to relational uh, databases and SQL. Um, chapter two is an introduction to this uh, tool that we're going to be using on our computer called MySQL Workbench, okay? Um, and chapter three is the first real skill-oriented thing. It's the first thing that's going to be on the test, right? It's the first thing that you have to hand in work for, okay? So... Uh, I want you to read the chapters. I've got recordings of the three lectures, copies of the slides, okay? 
we're going to have a normal uh, online lab on Sunday. And then the assignment that's due are the exercises for chapter three. Now we call these the My Guitar Shop exercises because there are a special set of exercises to come with our textbook, the Joel Maroc MySQL uh, textbook. Uh, but they're not the exercises that are at the end of the chapters. So the exercises that are at the end of the chapters are very similar to the ones that we're going to be doing. Uh, and I invite you, you know, to read through those and to try them. And the solutions to the end of chapter exercises are available with all the other data that we're going to download from the textbook. So you can actually go find the solutions, okay? The My Guitar Shop exercises are another set that's uh, shared only with the instructors. Uh, those solutions are not published by the author. Um, um, and that's why we use uh, that set. And also, uh, the My Guitar Shop is, uh, it's kind of a fun uh, case, okay? So, we're working on uh, that, okay? Um, one thing that I didn't talk about, and I'll only talk about it in a second, let's go back to week one. Whenever I'm going to have you play a video in the beginning of the course, I put, I put a link to a tutorial video that I have on tips for playing my videos, okay? How meta of me, okay? There are some aspects of the speed of my presentation um, that lend themselves to you being able to speed up the playback, control the playback. I talk about those things in this tutorial. So if you haven't played, you know, the meta tutorial, please do. I think it's going to help you mm, kind of understand my presentation style. And it's going to help you get the most out of the videos. Okay. All right. So let's go on to week three. What do we cover? Oh, I'm sorry. Week two. What's this uh, chapter three? How to retrieve data from a single uh, table. Uh, so relational databases are uh, table oriented. Uh, that's been very popular. Uh, relational uh, database products have been on the market um, in terms of viable commercial tools since 1979, okay? So they've been around uh, 41, 42 years, okay? They've been around a long time. They're well-established. A lot of people know how to use them. This uh, table point of view, which they have in common with spreadsheets, which are ultra popular as well, um, is really appealing uh, to most of us, if not all of us, okay? Uh, so what we're going to learn how to do the first time is how to write an SQL query um, to retrieve data from a single table. That's the easiest thing that you can do, okay? And this is going to be like, um, oh... Uh, here's what, here's the metaphor that I try to use. When you try to teach a person to ride a two-wheeled bike, let's say they've been riding a tricycle or uh, something like that, uh, typically you take off the training wheels at a certain point and, you know, in my day, they used to hold on to the back of the seat. We would hold on to the back of the seat. And we would get you to try to learn how to ride the bike in a straight line. Okay, so retrieving data from a single table is riding a two-wheeled bike. Okay, but it's in a straight line. Okay, where do we go next? In the next week, we're going to concentrate on Chapter 4, how to retrieve data from two or more tables. Uh, and that's like learning how to how to turn 
okay you know when you turn it to wheel bike you have to learn how to lean a bit yeah you know in the beginning you're going to turn too far it seems kind of dangerous all that kind of stuff uh but we learn that and most people are glad that they learned how to ride in a straight line before they started to learn how to turn and keep their balance when they're turning okay so that's where we're going in week two how to retrieve data from two or more tables and each of the weeks uh, has the same uh, schedule arrangement except for when we get to the very end okay um, for the class we're going to cover a chapter or two or three before we do that we're going to review the solutions to the coding exercises that were due the week before okay um it's really important that you know how well you did and that you understood the, uh, that you come to understand the things that you got wrong and that you have an opportunity to ask about uh what the latitude is in terms of uh what's a good practice in terms of your SQL coding and what's not okay uh, and those are the kind of things that we get in this first part of the session when we review the solutions okay then uh, typically I give the highlights for the new material you've already played the lecture uh, that gives us an opportunity to ask about uh, questions um, about the new material okay when we're finished with that it's usually well before the two hours have expired okay uh so what do we do with the rest of the time i convert it into online lab time okay so people who have already started their work um on the coding assignment say for chapter four they're already able to get help and ask questions about the work that they're already engaged with so you can get a really early start okay and be ready to uh to get some help on uh tuesday night or uh you can wait to get some help till uh sunday morning or in the meantime uh you can open a ticket on the service desk and we'll help you from there okay so in this week three we're going to be covering uh chapter four and then the assignment is about uh chapter four okay in week four we're going to cover chapters five and six chapter five is how to insert update and delete uh data okay there are a lot of users of relational uh databases and the sql language uh who just query the database um they use these sql selects in order to get answers from the database um but some of us in particular the programmers who build the web application systems that we use to maintain the databases some of us have to know about how to get the data into um into the databases insert how to change the data with updates and how to get the data out of the database with a delete okay so in this uh chapter five uh we cover that in chapter six we cover summary queries and summary queries are really cool um sql databases um the style of queries that we make with these uh, selects um is that we ask for the answer that we want to either consume ourselves or give to the user uh, okay so early databases which i was involved with well before relational uh databases um they would give us the opportunity to kind of cruise through the data retrieve what we wanted and then we would typically have a program that massage the data that we retrieved and turn that into usable answers sql's not that way okay uh we try to write the query 
so that the answers come back in the form uh, that the users can use, user could be us or a client, that the users can use immediately. So if we have summary questions, we have to write a query that gives summary answers. And that's what we cover in chapter six. Okay. Um, in week five, we're going to cover chapter seven and chapter eight. Okay. Chapter seven is sub uh, queries. Um, and sub queries, um, well, they're queries within uh, queries. Uh, they make it, mm, they make it really easy and flexible uh, to write more sophisticated uh, queries. They look uh, kind of scary on the face. Uh, the approach I take to the chapter is to unscarify them. Uh, and by the time we're done, that's where you'll be. Chapter eight is working with data types. Now the fact is, we've been working with uh, data types all along up uh, until this point because uh, uh, relational uh, databases are made up of tables. Uh, tables are made up of columns and each column has a data type. Uh, it's a string, uh, it's an integer, uh, it's a floating point value. Uh, and uh, it's it's a date. It's a date uh, time uh, combination. Okay, so by the time we get to chapter eight, we've been working on uh, a handful of chapters uh, where we've been uh, dealing with the data types. And here we're just learning some more. Okay, so. In week six, we're doing two chapters. Again, we're going to do nine and 10. Chapter, chapter nine is how to use functions. Uh, functions are uh, code bits. Uh, and if you're used to programming language, they're, um, they're like programming language uh, functions. And they allow us to uh, transform the data uh, in uh, favorable ways. Uh, one very popular uh, uh, function that we learned very early on, well before uh, chapter seven, is uh, concat. So if we've got, uh, say, three fields, uh, three columns, one that holds the first name, one that holds the middle initial, one that holds the last name, we can combine them with the concat function and we can get a whole name. This is very helpful in a technology where we typically disaggregate the data. We typically break up a name into three columns before we store it. Uh, and so we need to use a function like concat in order to aggregate the data to have a name be a single string. Okay. And, uh, there's a whole bunch of functions that we're going to learn about in chapter seven, and they do a lot of cool things. Uh, chapter eight, how did, uh, I'm sorry, this is uh, chapters nine and 10. So how to use functions, uh, chapter nine, how to design a database, chapter 10. Um, and this is our first kind of introduction to database uh, design. Okay, and we're going to learn how to design uh, simple uh, databases, three table databases. Okay, um, because that's how you learn best. Start small. All right. Uh, next week, we're going to be covering uh, chapters 11 and 12. Okay. Chapter 11 is how to create databases, tables, and indexes. And this is where we learn the part of the SQL language um, that creates uh, the schema for the database. Okay, so uh, SQL has uh, two parts, the DML, the data management language, that's what we've been using up to before this, to chapter 11. That's how we 
interact with uh, databases that are already defined by other people, okay? And in chapter 11, we learn how to define a database that is ours. It's the one that we designed. So we designed it in chapter 10, and we're using um, uh, the data definition language, the DDL, in chapter 11 in order to implement the design. In chapter 12, we learn about how to use these things called views and views are, are uh, views are really kind of interesting things um, we can use a, a view to create a kind of a temporary table it's instantaneously uh, temporary it goes away uh, at the end of the query that we do and there's all kinds of use cases for them um, do we have to have them? No, uh, they're optional, but they're very convenient. Um, and we put a lot of emphasis on them in uh, chapter 12. OK, where do we go from here? Well, now we're actually done with um, uh, the uh, the practical version of how to use uh, databases, having finished up with a little bit of the design and the implementation, right? So we're going to go back to the Andy Apple book and we're going to do three units. One on conceptual data modeling. That's the first one that we're going to do in week eight. Okay. And then the next one, logical database design using normalization that's what we're going to learn about in week nine and in week 10 we're going to revisit physical uh, database uh, design this is really um, an expansion on what we will have uh, covered in chapter 11 of the uh, of the Joel uh, Morak uh, book okay uh, and I really give this as a tour. There is no coding assignment for this. So these two previous units, the one on conceptual data modeling, and now the one on uh, logical database uh, design. Uh, most people who do this kind of work professionally see this as a three-step uh, process conceptual data modeling, logical database design, and then the last one, it, it, physical database design and implementation. Uh, okay, so whereas uh, when we're going through the Joel Morak book and we're learning how to design a simple three table database, uh, we um, we're not doing this formal three-step uh, process, okay? But then when we get to these units at the at the very end of the course, we're kind of backing up and we're taking a more thoughtful approach to how to do conceptual data, conceptual data modeling and how to do uh, logical database uh, design and then... Um, just some more insights into physical uh, database uh, uh, design. And uh, people who are working on kind of real world size problems when they're trying to model data and design a relational uh, database, they do well to see this as a three-step process because if they don't separate the parts of the process, they just get way in over their head and they spin their wheels, okay? And so we really emphasize this three-part process uh, in the last couple of weeks of the course because even if you're just going to design some kind of mm, medium size application for your work uh, group or your research project, okay? Um, it's gonna be big enough that th th this three-step process is going to save you a lot of heartache at 
when it's formally seen as the traditional three-step uh, process. Okay. So that's the end of the content for the course. What comes next? Uh, we have week 11. Week 11, we're just working on the final project. Okay. Um, could we be working on our final project earlier than that? Yes, we could. Okay. The, the uh, content that you need for the final project goes uh, all the way through chapter 12 of the Joel Morak book. So when we finish our work related to week eight, okay, uh, which is going to be when we discuss the solutions for those in week uh, nine, as soon as we have our class in week nine, you can jump in on the final project. Okay, you don't have to wait until we go through conceptual data modeling, logical database design, and uh, physical database uh, design. Okay. So let's go a little bit further. So week 11 is all about working on, on the final project. And then week 12 is also all about working on the final project. In both week 11 and week uh, 12, instead of having a normal class, we're going to convert the class session into a lab session. And that's what it says on the calendar. If you come back here in week 11, uh, the class it has been turned into a lab session. In week 12, it's been turned into a lab session as well. The final project is due uh, late Friday night, August the 6th. Okay, and the final project is, um, it's an entire uh, kind of medium sized database application for a fictitious uh, business called Wilma's Wild Wisconsin, which is a canoeing and kayaking operation in Wisconsin and uh, we do everything uh, I give you the logical database uh, design but you create the schema uh, you load the data you do all the queries um, you you create a set of 15 scripts that really represent the loading uh, the creating of the database and then all the SQL scripts that it takes to do the business of Wilma's Wild Wisconsin. Okay. And uh, here's my goal for the final project. I want you to have done an integrated project that take all the skills that we've learned in the course and use them in a coordinated way. Okay. The other thing I want to do is I want to build your confidence that if you found a project of about this size in your workplace and people were saying something like, well, let's do this with spreadsheets. Oh, OK, you could say, you know, I, th I think the, you know, the better solution for this would be a relational database. And you know what? I can design that. I can put that together. This is about the size of the one I did as my final project for the course. So I want to build your confidence that you're going to be able actually to use this on the job. All right. That's the course. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's certainly a lot of fun for me because I love, you know, this stuff. Uh, the summer seems especially fun, um, probably because I'm only teaching about half the number of courses that I typically teach uh, in the spring and the fall. Um, but we, we know we typically have fun, and uh, well, I'm gonna say that you're gonna have fun too. Okay, so the thing we haven't looked at is the syllabus. Let's take a look at that. There's a link to that on week one. Oh, I have that open uh, somewhere, so let me pull that out. There is a link to week one, but I'm going to open this up in. Uh, uh, Adobe Acrobat Professional instead of uh, the browser. Okay, so I'm going to go through this. I'm not. Uh, I'm going to try not to 
repeat myself, okay, over the stuff I've talked about already. Uh, so we've got the title of the course, the semester, the course number, the instructor and the TA, we've been through them. The class times from 6 to 8 on Tuesdays. Again, uh, the first uh, class is going to run till 8. We've got a lot to talk about. And, um, uh, well, I'm recording this. Maybe it won't run all the way to 8. But then after the first class, a typical class is going to run, well, at least till 7. But uh, sometimes it... It might be over at 7.15, it might be over at 7.30, and then the rest of the time will be optional online lab time, okay? Um, here's the opportunity for people who've already made a start on the homework assignment uh, to get help uh, right there on Tuesday night. Uh, the online lab sessions I talked about already. Uh, they're going to run from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. That's coordinated with the assignment being due at the end of the day on Sunday. Uh, to contact uh, either me or uh, Xiao Lang, uh, use the service desk for this course. Uh, and there's a link uh, to that right here. Uh, that brought me to the product that we use, which is um, uh, Jira Service Management is what it's now called. Uh, and I've got a lot of um, uh, tutorials and uh, documentation for you to read on that. Um, Okay, I've already talked about the course, so the description should be consistent with that. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave you to read the descriptions. And the course uh, topics is pretty much a list of um, the chapters that we cover and the, uh, and the units uh, that we cover. So it corresponds very well to that list of topics that I went through in the schedule. Uh, what would I like you to be able to do? Okay, what are the learning outcomes? Well, I'd like you to if, if, to be able to understand the use case for relational uh, databases and how it's different uh, than the use cases for conventional files and spreadsheets. Okay, I'd like you to be able to do all the things that you do in the course okay we've got two textbooks we've got the joel Maroc uh Maroc's my sequel third edition uh and we've got uh the book by andy oppel on data modeling a beginner's guide okay uh, these are both reasonably affordable books that are pretty easy to get. Um, I don't know if there's a digital edition of the Andy Oppel book. Certainly, I don't have one. There's a digital edition of the Maroc book that's available uh, from the publisher, and I have a link right here. Okay. They're both required please get them both. Uh, technology requirements, okay. Uh, you're going to be doing this work on your own computer, okay. Uh, the ideal computer is, uh, has a recent version of Windows 10 or a recent version of Mac OS. Uh, you can use a computer with Linux, but you're not going to get a lot of support from me. So if you really want to do that, please uh, contact me on the service uh, desk and explain to me how you're going to be able to support yourself. What I mean, and there are people who come to the course that can, uh, but I just want to be sure. Uh, two pieces of software that we're going to uh, 
download and install. We're going to do those during the first week. Uh, there are tutorials for doing that in the first week of the weekly schedule. Uh, the, the one is uh, the server and the other one is the client. So the server is MySQL Server Community Edition. Uh, it's the free version and um, the client is MySQL Workbench. It's a free product as well. Uh, why do we use MySQL? Well, it's popular, it's capable, and it's free. Okay, so this is a thing that you would have access to not only for learning the course, but you could have access to it for doing your own uh, projects. Now, what's the downside of being free? The downside of being free is the free users of MySQL are kind of the guinea pigs for MySQL. And so you would think that the free users would get uh, the product second and the paying users would get it first. But the way these open source uh, uh, products that have a paid version work is that the free users get it first and they find all the bugs. Uh, and then by times it goes to the people who are paying for it, uh, all the bugs have been found or most of the bugs have been found. Uh, so we're going to have an exciting time. <laughs> Okay, we're going to find some bugs. We're going to find some things, particularly on this MySQL workbench, where we're going to need a workaround or two. It's not going to be as pretty as we would like it to be. But it always seems to work. So if you have a little patience and you work with me, uh, you should do fine. There's a link here to the course schedule. I try not to change it, but of course, I do make changes where I add content, I, I correct uh, content or mistakes. And uh, when I do, uh, I change the content in the website, this weekly s schedule web app, okay? Uh, and I make announcements uh, in the announcements forum. Um, readings. Okay. So, um, uh, a typical scenario would be do the readings, play the recordings, come to class. Okay. Now, because most of the students in the class are graduate students and because graduate level learners don't always get lectures and readings about the same things, I'd leave it open to you to decide which of these resources is going to help you the most in what kind of order. Okay, so what I say is I want you to sample them all at the beginning of the course and choose a pattern of usage that works for you. Okay. Uh, live lectures and lecture videos. So the lectures on the Moroc book, which is most of the chapters that we're covering, are all recorded like this. And the, uh, uh, the lectures for the, uh, the chapters that we cover in the Andy Opple book are all live in class. Um, some of that has to do with just the history of the course. But it has a little bit to do with the nature of the material as well. Okay, so that's what you can expect. Tutorial videos, uh, I've got more than a handful that show you uh, how to install software, how to use uh, software to do what we're doing in the course, and uh, covering a couple of uh, tricky aspects of what we do. Um, it would serve you well to play the tutorials uh, because I think they're helpful. The coding assignments are, uh, again, they're from this My Guitar Shop series. Um, and then there's a couple of assignments at the end, uh, one for conceptual data modeling and one for logical database uh, design that are not 
coding per se, but they're technical work. Um, um, here's the deal on the grading for coding assignments. I believe that you'll learn the most if you do the assignment before we review the solutions in class. And so I have a deal that says if you hand the, the assignment in on time, you, you don't hand it in late, uh, you do all the work that you're supposed to do in terms of naming your submission file the right way, naming the, uh, the files that are the scripts that you're submitting the right way, um, handing it in on time, all that kind of administrative but very important kind of uh, technical details. If you do the technical details correct, uh, you get 10 points for that. And if you make a good faith effort on all parts of the assignment, and there's evidence of that and what you hand in, then you'll get 75 points for that. So the total of getting it in on time and uh, uh, following the directions about how to submit it and making a good faith effort on all points will get you an 85. Okay, that's a pretty good grade for uh, maybe not having, uh, maybe not getting a lot of it uh, correct, okay? Because what's important is that you're ready to learn when we get to class and we review the solutions, okay? Now, if you hand in your assignment late, you can never score more than a 74. Uh, oh, plus 10. Uh, so you can never score more than an 84. So hand it in on time and hand it in the right way, okay? I really, I've put a lot of extra points in there so that you'll do what's going to lead you to learning the most. Um, I believe that participation in the course um, by all people improves the experience and improves the learning. And so what I've done is I've come up with a point system to measure participation. Okay, and what I do is over the semester, I just add up the points uh, for all these things that I see you doing, like uh, making a greetings uh, post uh, on the service uh, desk. That's worth 10 points. That's an immense amount of points. Okay, making a post or a reply in open uh, discussion, one point. Speaking during class, uh, two points. Uh, Chatting in the chat during class, one point. Uh, making a presentation of your solution, okay, five points. Uh, a lot of times we break up into groups to talk about uh, our solutions. So whenever we break up into groups, being the spokesperson for your group, five points, okay. So I just add them all up, and at the end of the semester, there's a lot of adding that has to be done then because there's a lot of sources there. Um, I just add up the points and I grade it on the curve. So uh, the person or two who are at the very, very top uh, get 100, okay? Uh, if the people who are at the median get an 85, okay? If you get fewer than 10 participation points, you get a zero, okay? Now, it turns out that this is like 10% uh, of your grade. Yeah, 10% of your grade. That's a letter grade, okay? That's the difference between an A and a B, or a B and a C, okay? So uh, get active, okay? That's what counts. And it's going to improve the experience for you and for everyone else. The final project I talked about, okay, a lot of times uh, when we have projects in courses, they're group assignments. 
this pro project is an individual assignment. It is not a group assignment. Okay. And um, there's a lot of documentation on that assignment. I'm not going to tell you any more right now. Uh, please read the documentation. There's a tutorial to play about the final project as well. But do all that and come back with your questions. I'll be glad to answer them. Um, the grade, okay, Participata uh, participation 10%, uh, required coding assignments 45%, final project 45%. Okay, so that adds up to 100. Uh, the translation from the number grade, every assignment that I have, every grade I give you is on a scale of 1 to 100. And so I'm just averaging them uh, within the categories. Okay. Uh, and then I translate the number grade to the letter grade. Uh, I got this from one of my colleagues when I came here 13 years ago. Uh, and I've been using it ever since. And I think it's pretty widely used. Now, the last thing in the syllabus are these uh, iSchool and university academic uh, policies. Uh, so what's interesting about, about this uh, section of the syllabus is it's both boring and very important, okay? It's boring because it's what we call boilerplate. It's the same stuff that goes into every syllabus. Yeah, they change a little bit from semester to semester. Okay, so it's very easy to get lulled into not reading it, all right? On the other hand, these are all like super important things like academic integrity policy, statement on inclusion. How do we want to include all of you and treat you with the respect that you uh, deserve. Uh, religious observances, uh, accessibility, uh, COVID-19, all those things. Okay, so here's what I say. Read this stuff, okay? If you understand it, fine. If you don't need help with anything, fine, okay? If you don't understand it, and you'd like to discuss it, I'm here, okay? If you need help with one of these things, I might not be the person to help, but I'm the first stop on getting help if you don't know your way to it, okay? So again, kind of boring stuff um, because the text doesn't change very much from semester to semester and from course to course, but important stuff nonetheless. Okay, so... Uh, where are we? Well, I think we're about done with this. Um, I just want to emphasize this should be a lot of fun. Okay. Um, I certainly like all this stuff. It's why I'm still doing it after all the years I've put in, in the field. Um, I love to work with people who are learning about these kinds of uh, topics and skills and tools for the first time. Uh, I, I'm here to help. Uh, this is a course that has a wide range of uh, people who come to it. We've got some people who come. Uh, there are no prerequisites, so we've got some people who come who don't know a lick about uh, databases. It's not a thing, okay? You're in the right place. We have got some other people who are coming. They work with relational uh, databases, but they want to they want to understand them more deeply, more formally. Well, if that's you, you're in the right place as well. Some kind of a mixture of the people with a lot of experience and the people with no experience and the people with a little experience. It all seems to work. Okay, we've been teaching it like this at the high school for. Well, certainly the 13 years that I've been here, and it's a winning formula. So you're in the right place. Um, I, I'm here to help, and I'm excited about the semester, and I'm going to sign off here and say I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.